years ago, much has changed. She had a son. Omega, now 19 years old, became a British citizen and studied to be a nurse, a job she loved. <laughs> As Britain started to lock down, like so many others, Onyanachi carried on working. It was her duty, she told her family. She's been a healthcare visitor, she's been a care worker, she's been a nurse, nurse in, in a hospital. Um, so she's just always kind of sort of given her time to help people. I just think it's something that came naturally to her. That's so big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From the moment the pandemic really started to hit, I called her every single day. I called her one day and she was at work and I was really distraught. I wasn't happy that she was at, at work. Um, and three days later, I called her and she was sick. Early into the pandemic, the news Idioma had been dreading. Her auntie had caught the virus. I thought, OK, it might, it might be really horrible for her, but she'll be fine. So it didn't, it didn't, I don't know, the extent of it just didn't sink in. I just thought, OK, like, she's just going to be really ill and then she'll be fine. Um, but that's just not the way it turned out. On the 6th of May, after five weeks in hospital, Onyanachi passed away, aged 51. As the pandemic has evolved, it's become apparent that black and ethnic minority healthcare workers are dying at a disproportionate rate. Idioma wants more to be done to protect those on the front line. I don't think enough is being done to protect Bane nurses. All my auntie's friends who we've been in contact with um, because of this devastating news, they're all nurses. They're all nurses and they all have to go to work. And they come back with the same, same complaints. You know, um, overworked, underpaid, um, and just lack of consideration for their life. The family are now fundraising.